Improving the user experience of your Power BI visuals by adding conditional formatting, dynamic titles, reference lines has become much, much easier to set up and to maintain because of one big change in Power BI. Now, in this video, I'm going to show you what that is and, of course, some practical examples. Let's dive in. When we are developing our Power BI reports, we often have to create a whole list of measures that we are only using for a single visual where we need those measures to set up conditional formatting, change the maximum of the y-axis or dynamic titles. Now, wouldn't it be great if we don't need to store them in our data model so that everything stays nice and clean and do it at the visual level? Well, we can now with visual calculations. And that is not the only benefit. Visual calculations also allow you to write your calculations in a much easier way because you can point directly to other data points in your visual. Now, let me give you some practical examples of how I use them and actually prefer to use them for real life report building in Power BI. All right, starting off with conditional formatting. Let's say we have a column chart like this one over here. I just want to highlight the maximum or the maximum and minimum, a very common practical case. Now, then we can just select the visual, go over here to our build panel, tooltips, and then over here we have the button to add a new visual calculation. Now, let's call this one CF for conditional formatting, max is equal to, and then we can use a max x function to go row by row over the months. Well, I don't have to specify in visual calculation the month name field, which I have on the x-axis. Instead of that, I can just say rows, whatever there is on rows, and that is a big, big benefit of visual calculations because it's much more dynamic. Now, what measure do I want to base it on? On the total sales. Okay, and that's basically it. Now, let's see if this works. Now, this returns 6.7 thousand, which is indeed the maximum year we have it for March. Perfect. Now, if I want to use this now for conditional formatting, I have to tweak it a little bit further and put it inside of an if function. So that we can say if the total sales, so if the total sales is equal to the maximum, then I want to return a one, or we can also return the color green, or let's go for light green, a little bit prettier. All right, and then we can close the if function. Good. So now I want to use it for conditional formatting. So I go here to the formatting panel, columns, and then over here we have the FX button. And then here we can say field value and choose CF max. Huh. Still grayed out. I cannot click OK because I overlooked one important thing. And that is that the data type that gets returned needs to be text. And even though that's the case for a visual calculation. We still have to go here to properties, data format, CF max, and then put this over here to text. And only now we can use it to set the color. So if we go back and then choose field value and then CF max, you see, now I'm allowed to click on OK. And boom, it works. All right, and that's it. And again, the big benefit of using a visual calculation for that is that it doesn't really matter what is on the x axis. So I can go over here and choose something different than month name. For example, product subcategory. Let's go over here to products and then subcategory. And you see, it will still highlight the maximum. And with normal measures, well, I would have to hard code in this max x what we are iterating over, right? So here, that's nicely dynamic. So you see why I would prefer visual calculations here over using normal measures to apply the conditional format. Now, now it's just a matter of tweaking the logic to apply the conditional formatting rule that you're looking for. For example, here I extended the logic to also highlight the minimum. And instead of returning light green and red, you can also still work with one and two and set up a rule-based conditional formatting. That is also still working. All right, or maybe you want to highlight the columns on the basis of the change month over month. Now, then you could do this. Here I'm applying a green or red color on the basis of the month over month difference. And you see that the syntax of these visual calculations is much easier. We can just refer to that previous data point, the previous month total sales. 
All right, good. Let's have a look at another practical use case where I would prefer visual calculations over measures. And that is to set the y-axis maximum. For example, you want to do that when you need a little bit more space here at the top of the visualization below the title. Now to do so with visual calculations, we can again go here to tooltips, add a new visual calculation, and let's call this one y-axis max which is equal to and now here we can basically use that same function as before and so max x we want to iterate over the rows and then find the maximum total sales okay now this works all right but then we want to well have a little bit of extra space right so we don't want the y-axis to be exactly that 6.7 so let's go back over here to our calculation and multiply it by for example 1.5 okay now, if we scroll down here, we see at the total level, there we have 51,000. That's important because for the y-axis, there the evaluation happens not month over month, but over here at the total level. We don't have that month level filter contact there. So we need to tweak this a little bit further. Now, we need to wrap this inside of a expand all function and what this does is that it retrieves the context with added detail levels along an axis compared to the current context so basically brings in the months all right so we wrap this function this max x inside of an expand all and what do we want to expand the row so that we get to the month level okay and then you see we have 10,000, which is that maximum 6.7 times 1.5 also here at the total level and that's what we need okay and now we can go back to our report formatting. Then we select over here the y axis, and then the maximum we're going to set with that new measure. So field value, and then here we have y axis max. Click OK, and boom, you see the y axis gets rescaled. Everything goes down a little bit, and because we are now going to 10 and a half over there. All right, so it adds a little bit of extra space. And also here, Again, it's dynamic, so it doesn't really matter what we have on the x-axis. All right, let's go to the next example. I would use visual calculations also to dynamically add markers or data labels in an easy way. Now, over here I have a line chart, and let's first start by adding a um, moving average. All right, now, also that has become a lot easier with visual calculations, so we can just go over here, add a visual calculation, and you see here we also have different templates to choose from. For example, moving average. Now, if you compare this to writing this with a normal measure, it's quite a big difference. Here we can just pick the field, total sales, window size, three, perfect, confirm, boom, that's it, we have a moving average. Now, let's also change the formatting. Uh, so over here in the lines, I'm just going to make this one black, a little bit thinner, and then the line style, let's go for dotted, perfect. Now, the next thing that I wanna do is Highlight those data points that are above that three month moving average. Okay, so we can go back here to the build panel. And now I'm gonna add over here a visual level calculation. And let's call this one above three month moving average. Okay, so if the total sales is bigger than the moving average, then return the total sales. All right, and otherwise just blank, nothing. And that works, you see, over here we have a line with some gaps in between. Okay, now let's go back. Then we go over here to formatting. Then we go over here to lines. And for that above three month moving average, I don't want to show the line, but instead we go here to markers, turn them on, but turn them off for total sales and also the moving average one, and just leave it on for above three month moving average. So you see now we have only these orange dots, when the data point is above that line. And for data labels, it would work kind of in the same way, right? So uh, we could go here to data labels, turn them on, toggle it off for the moving average line and the total sales line. Just leave it on for the above three month moving average, all right? And then for that one, we could go here to value. And there you see, we have our visual level calculation. Now, the only thing that's still not really working is to 
use a different visual level calculation, for example, uh, with the difference to that moving average line and use that over there. That would be nice. There are still some places where you cannot use the visual level calculation. So that's a bit of a pity, but I guess uh, that will be fixed soon as well. All right, so we have seen how we can use visual calculations to apply conditional formatting, set the y-axis scaling, and to apply dynamic elements like markers and data labels. Now, the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to use visual calculations to dynamically set the titles. All right. So in this case, we could, for example, count the number of months where the total sales was above that three month moving average. OK, now to do that, we first need some in between calculations. So I'm going to go here to tooltips, click here on new visual calculation and let's call this one above three month moving average. True, false. All right. So here I can say if the total sales was above the moving average, then return a one, otherwise a zero. And this is just the step in between to get the count at the total level, because now I want to go back and then I want to wrap this inside of a sum x. So I want to iterate over the rows, sum x, rows. Okay, then we have this calculation, boom, all right. And if I would now click on OK, you see we have eight, but not at the total level. Now, how did we fix that before? By using expand all. OK, so we expand the rows to include the month level also where we have the total. All right, so here we expand the rows. All right, so that's the number that I want to show in the subtitle. All right, so now we just need a measure for the subtitle. So that's going to be another visual calculation. Let's call this one subtitle. And this is going to be equal to the above three month moving average true or false. Okay. And I want to combine that with some text. So ampersand and then in between quotation mark the text that I want. So eight out of 12 months we had above moving average uh, total sales. So let's add that here. Months above moving average. I'm pretty sure you can come up with a better subtitle. However, it's about the idea. So now I want to use that over here in formatting title. Now here is about the subtitle where I am actually using at the moment a normal measure. I'm going to get rid of that and I'm going to replace it with our new one. So field value and here we have our subtitle. Now again, I cannot click on OK. We now have seen this problem before. So I can go here to properties. And then here we have the subtitle one. And then here I want to have text. And only now I can select it here for applying the uh, dynamic title. So subtitle. And that's it. If we go back to the report, boom, there you go. We have eight out of 12 months above the three month moving average. So another great use case of visual calculations to apply a certain UX feature. And is there more? Of course there is more. There are tons of different examples I could still come up with, but I just wanted to show you the main ones. All right, maybe maybe one more. Uh, so over here, I would also use it often for setting reference lines or reference areas. Now, here I have two visual calculations. Let me click here and add it so that you can see them. Again, it finds the minimum or the maximum, a common pattern that keeps on coming back over and over again, right? This time we find the minimum of the moving average, the maximum, and then we can use those for setting the reference line. So if I go over here, you see I have two reference lines, two constant lines, where I can then use those measures. Okay, and here I'm using the shaded area. I get rid of that line. I just use the shaded area and then make sure that the one that is at the bottom has wide applied, right? So the bottom part so that you cannot see it. All right. And then for the one that's at the top, I choose a different color, the color in which I want to highlight a certain area. All right. And then you see the development of total sales versus the three month moving average max and then in a better way. All right, I hope this gives you a nice little overview of how you can use visual calculations to add UX elements to your Power BI visuals instead of relying on normal measures. So in this way, it's easier to set up, easier to maintain, and you keep your data model nice and clean. Now, if you want to check out my trainings, my Power BI trainings, I have a PL300 course, which helps you to get certified in Power BI. And if you want to build Power BI reports, 
together with me from beginning to end, learn all of my tips and tricks, then check out this training over here. Thank you for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.